Welcome to the Leadership Under the Microscope interview series, Plain Talk by Pragmatic Leaders, a production of JR Global. Here is your host, JR Klein. Today's guest is Asaf Rohn. Asaf is director of Beta Gafen, which is an Arab Jewish cultural center in Haifa, Israel. In this capacity, Asaf is responsible for directing initiatives for coexistent life in Haifa, together with the municipal council, the mayor, and community leaders. Beit Hagafen is a nonprofit Jewish Arab organization founded in Haifa in 1963. Uh, its two main goals are to develop to develop relationships and strengthen multicultural ties between different cultural and ethnic groups in Israel. The platform for this initiative is art. Through its galleries, theater halls, music, theater companies, libraries, youth centers, and visitor centers, it reaches out to a group with varied cultural identities, nurturing the value of respective people and striving to promote acceptance and diversity. Asaf, uh, welcome to the program. We're glad to have you here. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be. It's an honor for me to uh, be on your program and have a chance to speak about our place. Share a little bit with us about the story of how you got here and, and where your current passion is. Okay, so, I may say that personally I'm involved in this uh, over 40, 40 some years because I, I started my career from, with the informal education in Israel, which I think is very strong uh, comparing to the States and anywhere in the, in the world. Informal education is, is uh, very strong in Israel, which means um, we do a lot of informal activities with youth and young adults. Uh, to let them um, develop those skills. And I started in the Scouts in Israel, which is very different than the States. But I can tell you that one year or two years, at the age of 16 to 18, I think changed my life, which when I was taking the role of a counselor of a group of teenagers, um, they were going from 14 to 16. And uh, the sense of, the sense and, and emotion of, of having the ability to, to uh, uh, empower and change and be in charge. And I saw the, the, the influence I have as a young adult on teenagers, it was amazing. And since then, I'm in this, in this business. Uh, in my first year after the university, I was working for youth movement in Israel. And then I was um, developing a institute dealing with interpersonal communication and leadership skills uh, with a female um, partner we established an institute I was like a freelancer for 12 years dealing with uh, societies in change like uh, the kibbutzim in Israel who went from full common life to some privatist privatization I was working with leadership in the army and with uh, municipalities in uh, municipalities, education departments, with schools. So it's just my, my course of life. And I was lucky enough 10 years ago to apply to the opening of this institute, Better Geffen, the Arab Jewish Cultural Center, and won the, the call. And since then, I'm there. And so tell us a little bit about uh, Better Geffen and uh, what, it's, what it's doing in the community and in Israel. Better Geffen, uh, <laughs> is the first, I would say, the first community center, which now is a cultural center, but it was established as a classic community center 55 years ago. And you have to understand, it was 1963. Jewish and Arabs hadn't got the best relationship over there. Uh, not, not today, we may say, but, but over then it was definitely uh, um, one above the other. Today, the, the, the power is different. Maybe people are today feeling discriminated a little bit if you are Arab or, or in Israel, but still you can speak out and you feel you can fight for your identity. Then, back then, 
Arab uh, were not even full equal citizens in, in Israel. And the city of Haifa find it important to establish this kind of, of, of uh, center. So the first 40, 45 years, the center was dealing with informal education, you know, cooking courses and, and soccer and judo and anything you can do together. And people just came and did it. But time changes and we had to, when I came in role, we saw that the place was not giving the right answer for these times. And so we, we called ourselves uh, a cultural center. So we're applying not only the nearest neighborhood of Haifa, but also of the city of Haifa and all over Israel. And we try to connect people. What we can do, and this is my, my, my understanding and feeling, is we, we cannot bring peace. We cannot you know, sign contracts with other states. But we definitely have to bring people together because it starts, everything starts, starts and ends with trust, and, and with a sense of understanding that the world, as you said before, is, is not one story, it's multi-story society. And what we are doing in Better Geffen through art and, 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 and through culture is really uh, exposing all the, all the stories in the reality of Israel that people are afraid of each other's story. And this is not an easy task, but we are doing our best. If you ask me what my passion is today with Better Geffen is to have as many people as, ca as I can to just listen to the stories of the other. You don't have to agree with them, you don't have to agree about politics, you don't have, I don't want to change your mind about your vote today in the polls. Maybe personally I won't, but not as an institute. And, and, but I do want you to understand that you cannot live in, in, in a feeling that you have the only story and the only true story. You may say my, tr my story is true, I am right, but you have to understand there are more stories and you know what, you have to understand that your story can be right and the other story can be right too. And it's hard, but that's the truth. And this is our mission statement. Asaph, I, I hear the passion in your voice. I hear those elements of a driven leader always, always pushing toward performance, um, always moving toward more efficiencies and effectiveness. And we'd like to think that it's as easy as putting a shekel in the slot and, and pulling the lever and everything will work fine. But reality really shows us that it doesn't work like that. What, um, what do you find are some of your biggest barriers, some of your biggest challenges in this leadership? The most external input, which is, is, is a, a, a great barrier and challenge for a leadership in this, kind, in, this, in this mission statement, is the kind of society we are living in. And I think it's not only in Israel. Everywhere there is a tension between ethnic groups it's kind of dialogue of death, okay? People are not listening, just not listening. They may hear the words, but they are definitely not listening. Now, how do you change it? What, is, what kind of leadership can you offer to have people listen? And that's, that's a great challenge. If, and I, I don't know the, the best answer, but what I have learned with the years, it's first is understand, is, is be humble. Be humble, understand what you can do and what you can do. That's what I'm saying. When group is coming to us, I'm telling them first, please understand, I'm not trying to change your set of mind. It's not my world. I don't want to, be, to, to go out of here with, with different, uh, different uh, perceive or understanding of the conflict. I want you just to, to, to try to understand that this is more than your story. So this is a biggest challenge I have. And, and, the, and the skills I'm using is first of all, listening. If I want people to listen, I have to listen. The, the best leadership is, mo is modeling. And if I'm talking more than them, they, they won't listen. So for example, we are training all our staff and, and counselors and, and guides and facilitators to listen, to have more questions and answer. And we're telling the people, we are telling the groups, we can't give you answers, but we want you to go out with more questions. Because what is pluralism? How do you become pluralistic? 
First of all, you have to be curious. And a curious person asks questions. So we wanted to go home to ask more questions. And this is a skill we try to use. And it's hard because you, if, especially if you're passionate about it, you want to talk. You want to give your speech. And it's very hard. I've learned it through the years. I know I'm becoming better and better every day. But it's always hard. I always make mistakes. Sometimes you must remind yourself all the time, listen, listen, listen. And, um, but then, of course, you have to bring facts. You have to bring the stories in not threatening way. So another thing I learned with facilitating dialogue in a conflict is never speak only about one story. So even if I want to take Jews, Jewish people, and, and let them know better the Arab story, and I'll never only put on the table the Arab story. We'll always have the two stories because they won't listen. Because the only one story, especially in a conflict, it's not a regular ethnic group, uh, you know, conflict in New York. It's, it's like people are living in Israel in a feeling of life or death. And the story must be on the table. I think some of the elements of, of your comments really boil down to this idea of listening. In the academic community, the telling of stories is always very important. And this whole idea of sensitivity becomes something like what academics would call the concept of learning, unlearning, and relearning. Um, sort of bringing us to the place of identifying our common ground. You know, life teaches us these lessons, whether, whether we want to learn them or not. So my next question really comes to the point of um, what have some of these lessons been that you've learned over your time? Definitely. Definitely. Speaking about uh, encounter, encounters between cultures, uh, we are definitely, uh, uh, we have few, um, few lines that are going together side, side by side. First of all, the contact theory. We believe people must meet, meet each other in order to reduce stereotypes and, and, and barriers and fear. Now, we know it's not enough. We know the conflict theory is not enough. It's not enough just to sit together in a room. You have to do more than that. So we are working also, our, our, our theory of change is a narrative approach that under, understand or believe that your world or identity is, is built up from many, many stories and the way you, you tell it to, the, to yourself. And that's what's happened in Israel, because we tell the story to ourselves very biased because of fear, because of history of the two people. But I'm not, and I'm not blaming. It's some, one more thing I learned in my leadership. Never blame. Never blame people for being fear, for being afraid. Never blame people for being victims. Never blame people for remember too much our victims. Try to do it in other way, by bypasses. Just have them get the skills to look on to widen the angle and not be stuck on the hard part because what happened with the narrative approach is that we are stuck on the dominant narratives, which in our case for Jews are, is the Holocaust, of course, and for Arabs is what we, they call the Nakba, the 48 war. And, and how, do, can, how can you recon, reconciliate when you are always speaking about these two events, which are, of course, hard to, to encounter and how to to, to, to make concessions, okay? So we are developing the, the side stories, the stories about families, culture, common stories, and, and give people space to feel safe together. And we saw the miracle. The miracle is that after a couple of months, they are open up to listen to the hard stories and to debate, to debate and to dialogue. Again, I, I, I want to emphasize it, they want usually change their political minds, but they respect the story of the other. And for, if you ask me, in the long term, and there is only long term in this case, it influences, it changes the people. So this is one. And the third one is also we are working by the intercultural uh, approach, uh, which means there's an approach that, that sees the world today is a very mixed neighborhood-wise, it's not multicultural like Canada or Switzerland. It's not like you speak French until this line and English from that line. No, in Haifa you speak Arabic and Hebrew and Russian and Amharic in the same street. 
and it's not easy. It's not easy. So we are developing this, we, we are training people for multicultural uh, competence or cultural competence just to understand the basics of the different cultures that live in Haifa. So they won't be afraid of seeing something they don't know and respect it. We do bottom up, we work with youth, we work with, a, with a groups of encounter, with group of contact theory, you know, meeting each other that speaks about everything. But we also train teachers, we also train uh, municipal clergy, we also train policemen or hospital uh, nurses to understand the different cultures they are uh, working with, which is the top down. Asaph, these are, these are very good points. We, we see daily all the different types of views there are in the world, different approaches, different positions. Uh, the world is a flood with uh, different rhetoric. Some of it has some validity. A lot of it is, uh, is simply empty. All of it in some way, shape, or form connects to this idea of, of finding a, a safe place. And we understand that getting to where we want to go has a lot to do with how we get there. I'd like you to think for a minute and, um, and talk with us a little bit about what's next uh, what's next for uh, Beta Gafen? Uh, what's next for you? Where do you where do you need to go? Tell us uh, a little bit about your approach. It's a hard question. Well, it's a it's it's a lot to do. I I have to get people ready for the time that we'll have the brave, smart, encouraged politician who will sign peace treatments in the Middle East. That's my, in Israel, I'm speaking Israel now. It's, it's true in Paris, it's true in Harlem, it's true in probably other places, California, but not in the same story, but different ethnic groups. In our place, it's about wars. It's about really uh, people losing lives. And, but, but people, people are, are, are unfortunately around us are educated with hatred, okay? In some countries more, in some countries less. I don't want just to you know to count names or whatever. And and I believe in my society, Israel, we don't. Most of us, at least, are not educating for hatred, but we don't do enough to get people to know the other story, so they won't have this stereotype and and, and fear that is developed for seventy years already. Uh, so my role is in better with better Geffen is to have as many people as I can. First of all, encounter with each other. Second, uh, open their minds and, and, and through our art and exhibitions and, and plays and, and, and whatever we are doing and, and workshops, go home with more questions and, and a little bit, we call it, we do a little bit crack in your belief. So you want to learn a little bit more, to widen your angle of, of looking at society and, and your new neighbors. That's what I want to do. And I want to get to reach out to as many people as I can. And of course, as an institute, I want to be to be in, in a place which we are every year becoming more and more, I think, famous in it of, over Europe too. Uh, that is a, a, like a, a, a center of knowledge to train people to do it in other places because it's not enough one building in one place to do it. And, and there are many skilled people all over who can do it. They just have to have some resources. Have have um, the passion and, and, and decide to do it. So I'm trying to train more people to do it also. To quote John Keats, yet on the shores of the wide world we stand alone and think. Let's think for a moment about what your message would be uh, to a new generation of leaders who are coming into a world that still has problems to solve. What would you say to them? Well, I want to, you know, as, as a, as a, it was my, from my experience, I would definitely advise, always be proactive. Never wait for things to happen. Always take risks. Be calculated, but always take risks. No risks, no development. And believe. Always believe, always have a vision, always, always think 
uh, far away for something that sounds and looks and, and you think it's impossible. Because it's the only one that will change really the world and we can do it. We can do it together. Always uh, make partners and work together. Always cooperate. You can never do anything alone as best as you can do it with other people. Very good. Very good. My father would have told us that none of us was better than any of us. So you, you need to talk to everybody if you're ever going to get anything done. Uh, thank you very much, Yosef, for your your time with us, your openness and uh, candid uh, nature talking about what you do and who you are. We very much appreciate the time that you've, uh, you've given us and um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening to Plain Talk by Pragmatic Leaders. JR Global specializes in socially responsible business consulting. To learn more, visit jrglobal.co.